The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in the gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Have you heard what happened on the star? Did you hear what he said to her? Do you know what she told him? Yes, the whole town's talking. The star they're talking about is the morning star, a newspaper. The her they're talking about is Susan, lovely, attractive, headstrong Susan. And the him, well, you can see him right now walking down the street over there. Yes, and believe me, if he knew what was about to happen, <laughs> he wouldn't be whistling. Hey, Jack. Huh? Oh, you mean me? Yeah, yeah. You were a reporter, writes pieces for the paper and stuff, ain't you? That's right. Uh-huh. Well, let's step into this alley here, will you? I got an item for you. News, eh? Sure, sure. Right here's a good place. Yeah, the sun was kind of hot out there anyway. Yeah. Well, friend, what's this uh, item you've got? Well, it's strictly personal, chum. You, you've you been making inquiry around about concerning the guaranteed, always-flowing oil development company, huh? True, I have. Yeah, you've been saying like that company ain't on a level. Well, you might say I entertain certain doubts. Look, let's make it simple, eh, Jim? You, you've been saying that you are going to print that stuff in the Hillsdale Morning Star. Those are my intentions. Yeah, well, the president of our company, Mr. Carter Gaston, he asked me to convince you otherwise. Mm -hmm. Print nothing but praise about our company, or I am going to see that you land in the obituary column. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fair warning, friend. But I think I should tell you that I used to be heavyweight champion in my college. Oh, you was a champion? Yeah. Don't believe me, eh? Well, yeah, sure, champ, sure, but... <laughs> Wonder just what college he went to. Hi, Mr. Harvey. Wow. An altercation with the truck? I'll exchange witticisms with you later, Sammy. I want to see Miss Armstrong. Sure. Who doesn't? Susan, I've got something to say to you. Shh. I'm on the phone, George. Really, Mr. Gaston? No. No! But he just came in, Mr. Gaston, and I'll certainly talk to him. Not at all. Goodbye, and thank you for calling, Mr. Gaston. Susan, I've got something to say to you. George, really? Look at your suit. Well, suits get this way when they've been bounced around in the gutter. Occupant still inside. Oh? Oh, she says. Try to control your vast outpouring of sympathy, Miss Armstrong. About this phony oil outfit that everybody in town is falling for... I've just I... heard from Mr. Gaston, George. He told me how you assaulted that poor little salesman of his. He... he what? What made you do it, George? The sunspots. Now listen, Susan. I'm going to write an article blasting Gaston and his crooked outfit from here to... Just what proof have you? Well, I... well, none. Yet. But I'll have... George... I know character. I've talked to Mr. Gaston over the phone. And from what Alderman Connolly tells me Alderman about Connolly, him, he's he... as hard to bribe as a head waiter. I know character, George. Will you stop saying that? Shouting will not convince me. All right, all right. So we won't print anything. So Gaston sells his phony oil stock to the whole town. You happy? Do I have to remind you, George? That you're the editor, I know. No. That you inherited the paper from your father and did very nicely before I arrived. Granted. That I have a nasty, suspicious mind. I concur. Have I left out anything? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know character. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Actually, George, you worry me with all your suspicions. Why don't you come to dinner tonight and we'll talk things over? Comfort. All right. But if you think you're going to bribe me with food, you're right. <laughs> Working late tonight, Mr. Harvey? Lift your feet, huh? Yeah. I'm just whiling away the time till 6.30, Sammy. Whiling away. Okay, put them down. You and the boss can live things up a little tonight? Miss Armstrong has been kind enough to invite me for a platonic dinner, yes. Ha. For one so young, Sammy, you have a very nasty ha. Ha. Miss Armstrong is interested in me only as a reporter. That phrase can have a very sad history, Mr. Harvey. 
Sweep your floor, Sammy. You know, you could be a success, Mr. Harvey, if you wanted to be. Your confidence touches me. Why don't you marry Miss Armstrong and, and let her take you out of all this? Thank you, Horatio Alger. Anytime. The 6.15, Mr. Harvey. Oh, thanks. Oh, say, Sammy, you, you uh, haven't got a couple of bucks for a box of chocolates, have you? There's a romantic imagination. Chocolates. Take her an orchid. A single rose. A single rose, huh? Uh, Sammy, have you uh, got a buck for a single rose? No. Well, that's time to go. Visitor, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, so I see. Good evening, boy reporters. Miss Armstrong here. What's it to you? What's it to you? <laughs> I wish I'd said that. Gets things like that off all the time, this kid. You should hear him when he's hot. Mm. Stay off my side, Sammy. Miss Armstrong's not here, and she won't be back. Well, I don't blame her. Take a message. My boss, Mr. Gaston, he's a very big man in oil. He enjoyed talking to Miss Armstrong on the phone today. He wishes her to call on him at his hotel suite tomorrow. Can you remember all that, or should I write it down? Don't bother. Incidentally, chum, that was a pretty lucky punch you got in this afternoon. Well, it happens all the time. You think you could do it again? It figures. Mr. Harvey, the paper needs you. Stand aside, Sammy. This won't take long. All right, you... Poor Mr. Harvey. Wonder what else he learned in college. How's the dinner coming, patients? Mr. Harvey should be here in a minute. Everything's under control, Miss Armstrong. But I want things to be especially nice tonight, patients. Mr. Harvey and I have been having, well, one of our disagreements. No. But he was quite nice about coming to dinner. Big of him. Let's see. He doesn't get paid until tomorrow. Was he nice or just weak from hunger? Now, George always speaks very well of you, patients. And your cooking, too. No fool, Georgie. What time is old freeloader due? <laughs> about 6.30. I thought we might have a, a leisurely dinner and then retire to the music room later. Uh-huh. And then you just happened to wander over to the piano... Hum a few bars or something romantic. Mm. You think that's too corny? George is a corny fellow. He might even bring his saxophone along. No, I think that's in Hawk. Well, you'll do your best on the dinner, won't you, Patience? I'll pretend I'm cooking it for my favorite movie hero. And after dinner, you'll just, uh, leave us? Oh, sure. You want me to burn any incense? No, no, I don't think so. No, George has hay fever. If it's for free, he's got it. Well, I've got to finish dressing. Oh, Patience, what can I wear to make him really notice me? How about a corsage of baked potatoes? Oh. oh, he is nice, isn't he? Hungry, but nice. And tonight might even be the night that, you know... I know, I know. Tonight might be the night. I hope the piano's in tune. The man who plays the sax would never notice. It's so nice to have a man around the house. It's so nice to have a man around the house. Someone who is glad he found you, who will put his arm. I'm giving two to one. Nothing happens tonight. Nothing. Good evening, Mr. Harvey. Good evening, Patience. Ah, more beautiful with each passing hour. It's my perfume. Amour Hollandaise. Turn me aside with the jest, Patience, but the flame still burns on. You'll find a glass of water in the kitchen if it gets too hot. Hey, something happened to you. Nothing, nothing at all. Oh, sure, sure. Well, have a chair, gorgeous George. Miss Armstrong will be descending the grand staircase momentarily. Ah, comfortable chair. Pleasant house. Can't beat the cooking either. Hope my jaw is not too sore to enjoy it. George? Hmm? What patient should have told me? I had no idea you were here. George, what's happened to you? I brought it on myself. But I only left it's you... It's nothing, Susan, nothing. Susan, uh, you didn't dress just for me. Dress? Oh, this? 
Oh, it's just an old thing of mine. Well, it <laughs> certainly does things for you, or vice versa, whichever the case may be. Thank you. And sorry now I didn't put on my other tie. <laughs> Sit down, George. Huh? Oh, <laughs> didn't realize I was standing. I tribute to your dress. <laughs> You're gallant. You know, Susan, it always surprises me to see you when you're outside of the office. You look like a different person. Oh, thanks very much. I, I didn't exactly mean it the way it sounded. I I just meant that, well, women in business, you know... Uh, Our places in the home. No, 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 not that, not that at all. It, uh, in fact, I can't imagine you in a home. Uh, uh, I mean... Uh, yes, Well, you... what I mean is you... Uh, uh, where's my hat? I'll go quietly. Oh, oh. Just don't talk so much, George. Well, look. The piano. I haven't played in ages. Do you mind? No, no, no. Won't bother me at all. I mean, I mean I, I'd love it. I love it. Will you help me move this bench, George? Oh, certainly. Yeah, that all right? Uh, you know, Susan, I was just noticing the candlelight. It uh, does something to you. Oh, what? It makes you look... Uh, I don't know. I'm changed. Does it? Susan, we shouldn't argue all the time. Like that thing today. I, I, I shouldn't have blown up the way I did it. It was foolish. Oh, it's all right, George. What do we care if some crook peddles a few shares of phony oil stock here in town? Hillsdale hasn't been taken for a long time. I am sure, George, that the development of the new Hillsdale oil field will do a lot for our city. Oh, sure. Hillsdale, the new Arabia. And why not? I have every faith that Mr. Gaston and his organization, and, and I know character... Character, character. You told me. Now, look, here's something you didn't know, Mr. Harvey. There's an error stopping at the General Grant Hotel, Miss Cecily Burnett, and she's here to try and buy up the entire stock issue. Freeze Hillsdale out. Well, it'll be the warmest winter we ever had. Oh, George, are you the most exasperate? <sighs> Cigarette. Thank you. We shall not discuss Mr. Gaston further. Quite. Ah, the gall of that phony. He sent word that he was quite fascinated with you and would like you to call at the hotel tomorrow. Oh, it, well, ah. how interesting. Susan, you're not going. Well, why not? Why not? You think I'd let you alone with that fake moose? Well, I fail to see that you have a great amount of choice in the matter. Oh, you do? Well, if you're going, then I'm going with you. There seems to be more than the usual confusion in your mind, George. You are a reporter on my paper, not my guardian. Well, right now, you what you need is a guardian. A dinner, Quite right yes, amount sir. of jealousy rearing its tousled head. Oh, sure. Just because I can smell a crook a mile off, it's jealousy. Well, if you can smell a crook as well as you can scent food, well, I might be impressed. Personalities. But... All right, if we're down to personalities, how dinner about... Dinner is hmm? served. What? what? Dinner. Oh, oh. My arm, Miss Armstrong? I can manage quite nicely, Mr. Harvey. Somehow, I doubt very much that tonight is the night. Now, suppose we get back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, in the second act of our story. Let's see now. Irene, uh, oh, sorry. I mean, Susan is just about to go down. Good morning, patients. Good morning, Miss Armstrong. Your breakfast is ready. Thank you. I take it that last night was not exactly an evening with Valentino. Your assumption is correct, patients. Too bad. You got a big investment in food in George. A romance patience cannot be built entirely on stuffed cabbage. That's open to question. However, oh, phone. Are you in, Miss Armstrong? To Mr. Harvey, no. Hello? Georgie. I am not in. Uh, she is not in, Mr. Harvey. Wonder what he wanted. Why didn't you talk to him and find out? I couldn't. Mm. Well, I... Oh. Hello? He wants to know if you're still not in. Yes. Hello? She says yes. He wants to know if you said yes, you're not in, or yes, you are in. I'll take it, patience. Hello? Susan, I just wanted to make sure you weren't serious about calling on that phony oil promoter today. Mr. Harvey, 
As editor of the Star, I cannot see how my appointments are a source of concern to you. But, Susan, I... However, your movements as a reporter are in my field. Therefore... But, Susan... Therefore, you will cover the PTA convention at 10, the dog show at 11, the Rotarian luncheon at 12, hog breeders exhibit at 1, the chrysanthemum grower show at 2, and be in my office from 3 to 5 to write your stories. Any questions? Yes. Are you mad at me? Yes. Poor Georgie. Well, morose is a word for Mr. Harvey. I'm a strong man, Sammy. I wish to brood in silence. Miss Armstrong has gone to call on the oil promoter. Pretty racy fellows, oil promoters. Go fill an inkwell. Why don't you strike back, Mr. Harvey? How? In the movies, Mr. Harvey, you would burst in on Miss Armstrong and Mr. Gaston in, in some suitable disguise. Like, say, a plumber. Well, that's a silly idea if I ever heard one. Plumber, huh? Borrow a wrench and a plunger. Your suit is just right for it. Sammy, I may do it. I may just do it. The spirit of the pioneers. And if this Gaston steps one inch out of line... Sammy, where can I get a nice, big, fat wrench? Yes, ma'am? Uh, Mr. Carter Gaston? I'm Susan Armstrong from the Hillsdale Morning Star. Oh, come in, come in, Miss Armstrong. Very considerate of you to come. Oh, not at all, Mr. Gaston. Uh, here now, just take this chair, Miss Armstrong, where I can look at you. Like to look a person right smack in the eye, ma'am. Can tell what sort they are in a minute. Well, I always think so, too. Nothing shifty-eyed about you, ma'am. <laughs> if you'll excuse the liberty. Well, thank you, Mr. Gaston. And you and I, Miss Armstrong, we can do a lot for this city of yours. Civic betterment. The greatest good for the greatest number. Exactly. Did you know, ma'am, that a young lady of great wealth is right here in this same hotel trying to buy up my entire issue of stock before the public gets a chance at it? Well, you're not going to sell. Well, I haven't met the lady yet. Miss Burnett of the Eastern Steamship Burnett's, I believe. Uh-huh. But I would much rather give the honest folks of Hillsdale a chance to cash in on the rich natural resources of their little community. Well, I think that's a fine sentiment, Mr. Gaston. Why, thank you, Miss Susan. And if you'll permit me to say so, I... Lover! Why, George! I, uh, I hear you got a leaky pipe, Mr. Gaston. Before you come busting in here, son, knock. No, I'm sorry, but uh, don't let me interrupt anything. I'll just go quietly on with my work. <laughs> You were saying, Mr. Gaston? Why, uh, well, where was... Uh, oh, oh, yes. If you'll permit me to say so, Miss Susan, the good opinion of a fine woman like yourself means more to me than, than any... What? Uh, the good opinion of a fine woman like you means more to me... I can't than, hear you! I said the good... Uh, well... I found the trouble. Good. Then you're leaving. No, no, no. I have to rip out a section of the wall here. Uh, Miss Susan, uh, may we continue this conversation over dinner? Where are you eating? Will you call me, Mr. Gaston? Oh, my pleasure, ma'am. Goodbye now. Until tonight. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be back. I, I forgot my pickaxe. George Harvey, if all the low, underhanded, sneaky... Treacherous? Yes. Susan, if you can't see through this whole swindle by you yourself... You will allow I... me to make my own judgments, Mr. Harvey. I know character. I know, Susan. Susan, this, this oil scheme is a fake. Uh, What's more, I think this so-called heiress here in the hotel is Cecily Burnett is a fake, too. And I'm going to interview her and prove it. Oh, you are. Oh, you just love that. Purely business, Susan. Oh, you're so right, Mr. Harvey. And I'm going to be around to see that it stays purely business. <laughs> Miss Burnett? Yes? I, uh, I represent the Hillsdale Morning Star, Miss Burnett, and... But uh... how clever of you. I'll take one. No, no, no. No, you see, Miss Burnett, I'm a reporter. Well, of course you are. Come in, sit down, report. Thank you. Uh, no, right here, by me. Oh. Now. Well, uh, just a few questions about your business in Hillsdale, Miss Burnett. You see, uh... Oh, you want to interview me? You sweet thing, you. <laughs> Thank you. You see, there's an oil promotion scheme underway here in town, Miss Burnett, and I... Brown eyes. Hmm? Oh. Uh, 
You see, I have reason to believe this Gaston isn't what he presumes to be, and... Uh... Six two? No, no. Six three? three. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> uh, but if you're really considering putting money into this thing, Miss Burnett, well, uh, I just don't think it would be very wise. Excuse, please. A three o'clock snack. Susan. Uh, can I see the General Grant Hotel? I'll put it on the end table. Now then, uh, as I was saying... Oh, how do you know I like wavy hair? Uh, you want it over here? Yes, and please hurry. Now then, golden boy, your name is, uh... George. George Hunter. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Will you please get out of here? I'm sorry, George, I didn't catch your last name. It's... Dope. What did you say? Oh, I said I, I hope everything's all right. Well, it's not all right. Now, you please get out of here and get out fast. Oh, certainly, ma'am. <sighs> now, where were we, golden boy? Golden boy. Oh, brother. Uh, I'm sorry, George. Now I know what you want. You want to save me millions of dollars, and you want to tell me all about it tonight over dinner. Right? Uh, roughly, yes. Oh, you do sweep a girl off her feet, Georgie. What time is dinner? Oh, uh, nine-ish. Hmm, you speak the language. Oh, I get around. But not around me, you reporter. <laughs> <laughs> until tonight, Cecily. Huh? Oh, until tonight. Oh, au revoir, Georgie. Huh? Oh, oh uh, au revoir, Cecily. Oh, these Frenchmen. Irresistible. Well, Charles Coming in there as a waitress. Oh, really, Susan, of all the low George, conniving... an heiress. If she's an heiress, I'm Pocahontas. If you were any judge of character, Pokey, you'd know that this girl is in danger of being the innocent victim of that swindler you were so eager to make a dinner date with. I was eager? Well, I didn't notice any long pauses in the conversation while you were making a date with her. We will not discuss conversations overheard through keyholes. Banging into a room as a plumber. I suppose that's recommended by Emily Post. Now, you listen, Susan. Now, you listen to me, George. After all, where you go tonight is not of the slightest concern to me. Likewise, I'm sure. Au revoir, Mr. Harvey. Au revoir, Miss Armstrong. Uh, good evening, Monsieur Harvey and Madam. Oh, uh, bonjour, Charles. Uh, table for two, huh? If you will follow me, please. Oh! Oh, what a delightful little bistro, Georgie. Sort of a subway with music. It uh, is a little crowded, Cecily. Yes. Monsieur Harvey, your table. Susan. George. Oh, oh, how nice that we should have a joining table. A joining? They're practically overlapping. Oh, Mr. Gaston, you remember Mr. Harvey, the plumber. Mm. Pleasure to see you again, sir. And uh, Miss Burnett, Miss Armstrong, uh, a waitress. How do you do? How do you do? And uh, Mr. Gaston, Miss Burnett. Real pleasure, Miss Burnett, ma'am. Why did you have to come here? Quite pleasure, Mr. Gaston. And entirely unexpected, I'm sure. Huh? Shall we sit down, Cecily? Yes, of course. Just bring me a shoehorn, Georgie, and I think I can make it. <laughs> there. No trouble at all, was it? Oh, well, pardon me, George. My salad. I know you don't like garlic, so if you'll just wring out your sleeve. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that better? Uh, Mr. Harvey, sir, as long as you've got your elbow in my butter, would you mind just running your arm over my corn on the cob? I certainly would. <laughs> Ignore them, Georgie. I'm sure they had a lot to talk about before we came. Well... Yes, we did have a lot to talk about, didn't we, Carter? <laughs> Carter? Uh... <clears throat> I'm sure George wants to tell Cecily all about the plumbing business, and you were explaining oil to me. Well, I bet he was. Oh, we don't have to talk, Miss Susan, when I can feel your little hand in mine under the oh, table. Mr. Gaston, my hand. That's my hand, the... you cheap double-crossing chiseler. Oh, Cecily, you... Out on a business engagement tonight, you told me. Why, yes, you... sit I... down, dear. Oh. You're an heiress. Yes, and I'm just about to become a widow, too. Oh. Let me at him, George. Oh, George, yes, George, let her at him. Now, take it easy, Cecily. Hey, you got trouble, Mr. Gaston? Glad you come in, Rocky. We're blowing town. My wife, the heiress, just opened her big, rich mouth. Come on, Mrs. You Vanderbilt. You get away, George. Oh, I'll stop them, Susan. Stay here, Rocky. If the demon reporter here gets noisy, keep him quiet. Come on, Cecily. Well, I can handle him, boss. Hey, sit down there, fire eater. Sit down, nothing. This time, you muscle-bound clown, I'm going to... Susan, look out! You take your hands off my George, you... Hey! The little lady hit me! And so did I! Oh, George! You were so masterful. Oh, you can't fool around forever with George Harvey, Susan. Oh, no. Of course, you all. helped a little. George, you you did it. Well, you... have it your way, Susan. We won't argue. Oh, Mr. Harvey, what, what has happened? Well, only two for dinner, Charles. The other couple won't be staying. <laughs> <laughs> Our 
Our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back in a moment. George. Yes, Susan? Finished your story? Just about. I had a call from police headquarters that they couldn't hold Gasson and his wife. They actually hadn't sold any stock yet. George, you don't actually think I was taken in by him, do you? Do you? Susan, you don't actually think that I was taken in even for a minute by his wife, the phony heiress, do you? (laughs) Well, I don't if you don't, George. If you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. After all, Susan, we both Both know character. character. (laughs) Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Von Zell inviting you to join us then.